lady. Okay, that's... Let me back that up. Hey everybody, you Steve here from The Very Life, and today we're gonna check out that thing there, that enclosure with the Saturn III Ultra to see if it works and vents out the smell of resin, so that way you can continue to breathe fresh air and not those harmful VOCs. So let's get right to it. Alrighty everybody, Steve here, and today what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna be printing this out here. And in case you're wondering, this is a model of some Warhammer-esque type of figure that we're gonna be doing, and it's from gambody.com. So uh, we filled up pretty much the entire build plate and a single print. So that'll be interesting. We've gone ahead and we've already put it onto our USB drive. So what we'll end up doing is taking this into our hobby room, which this enclosure is pretty nice because as you can see in the fan in the back, it has a ventilation system. And then I also added a light so we can get a time lapse a little bit later on. We'll see how that works. And yeah, we've got the ventilation system going out to the back there. Yeah, that's what we're gonna end up doing. And we also have a heater in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug that in. And then we'll stir up the resin. And we'll put our USB stick in there. So with that said, and the magic of video editing, Okay, another little update. We're about 54% done. And, yep. So I got that, so about another three hours and 45 minutes. And we're starting to see we've got printage. So, so far it looks like everything's doing okay. We'll find out. Uh, we're still pushing it about 39 degrees in there, so. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, I didn't turn on the fan. Okay. <laughs> that is the switch for the fan. So many new things, I forgot to turn the fan on. Imagine that. You can feel a little bit of draw there. So, let's check out the airflow test. Highly technical test here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, we have we have airflow. Even does the the hang test, <laughs> the airflow hang test. It works well. Imagine that when you turn the fan on, it it works. Okay, so we are finishing up. And our print is completed. And you can kind of put on a little, little thing there. Turn on the vent fan when printing because that works a hell of a lot better than if you don't. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and open up this. Okay. It looks like our print might be okay. So that's kind of a good thing. But what we'll end up doing is we'll do that. And we'll do this. Okay, there's a big difference in the ventilation, I can already tell you. And even though I use water washable resin, using the enclosure with the ventilation system makes a big difference in regards to the smell of resin because all of that is being vented outside. Of course, you do have to turn the vent fan on. That that helps. It's amazing on how, how that works. So anyway, let's get to the print and see how well it printed out. This is a huge, huge print. And this will be really interesting to see how well this comes out. First print here, which is the kind of a gun. 
get that. This will be part of the staff. That came out, looks okay. Now some of the bigger pieces, like the feet and the base. Oh, that came off nice. I don't know, we might have, might have a few problems on this. It's hard to tell. Yeah, we definitely got some problems here because there's supposed to be some purity seals. Those came out kind of wonky. I guess I didn't support those well enough. But the other ones came out okay. So that's not too bad. This is kind of an odd print, but there was some problems. And I don't know how well this is going to work out, especially when you have the rib cage and all of this. We see that it's kind of thin. That's a lot of supports. The main body himself. Adhesion is good. And this has got a ton. And we can see some of the chains. We got some problems there. So what we'll end up doing some supports and we'll start with the easiest one here this is going to be this guy so that came out pretty good with this dual bolter. That came out nice. Let's do this guy here. Let's see how this goes. Like I said, we can see there's some the purity seals that were on here just didn't make it. And I kind of figured that I added in some, some supports, but obviously not enough for that. Uh, one support going up and so like back here you can see where I added multiple supports Now the 
the big boy here is going to be the problem because it is just a mass of supports. Not too bad on the back. Yeah, look at that. So we get some problems with his arm. see what happens and we know the bolter is good the staff is good the base is good for the most part and this might be redeemable in a little bit but I think we'll have to end up doing this we'll, we'll definitely have to reprint this because he didn't have an arm but he's missing an arm and then that's the arm that's supposed to be holding the staff with the, the dude See how these don't really match up on the bottom. So, okay, I'm ready. And so there it is. Few moments later. Okay, a little bit of an update. Uh, what we ended up doing, since he didn't have his arm, uh, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to throw this away. I'm going to do what is called kit bashing. In other words, you take stuff and you put it to where it wouldn't normally go. And so we're going to take this skeleton that was supposed to go on the staff and we're going to replace that as his right arm. So, I mean, that kind of ties in. And then what we ended up doing is putting the staff on the back of his pack there. So make it kind of like a radio guy, I guess. My, homage to my time in the military carrying radios and tactical satellite communication systems and all that but i think this works out now we're gonna have to fill in some gaps there as we see i think this will work and even though his rib cage is a little bit wonky i think that's okay i think another kit bash idea that i could end up doing is taking and putting like a rifle or some type of gun on this bottom part. So, or maybe a claw or something like that. But I think that makes this redeemable. Um, yeah, tell me what you think in the comments section down below on whether this is good or this is passable or I should throw it away. So yeah, get to the comments box and while you're at it, like and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. Now to summarize this entire video, what we ended up doing is testing out the UPI 3D printer enclosure. It is a flame retardant material. It has a ventilation system. It has a UV front so that you can see what you're printing. You don't have to have the cover on your printer. And I have the Saturn 3 Ultra. Seems to work out really well. One caveat though, is that you must turn on the ventilation system to vent out the resin smell and the VOCs. I, I don't know if you know about this technology, but there's this on off switch and it just works exponentially better if you turn it on to vent out those VOCs and nasty smells. So with that being said, I do like the enclosure. I think it works well, it traps in heat. It has good ventilation in it when you turn it on. Uh, some of the things that I wish were different I wish that the order or the sequence in which the fan and how it attaches to the enclosure itself was put in the order that I did because the order and the instructions um, don't really seem to work out well. So that's why I made that little adjustment to mine to seal up where the fan and that adapter with the fabric in the middle and that seems to work out the best. Another thing that I would like to see is more pockets on both sides of the enclosure itself so that you can put some little tools and 
things and this and that and bits and pieces, uh, I think that would be kind of an additional selling point. Uh, yeah. Now, another thing that I would like to add to this system would be an LED light strip. So that way you can see what you're actually printing and do time-lapse photography. So I like the fact that I was able to add a ring light and I didn't have any problems with my prints. It didn't like pre-harden or have enough UV exposure to ruin the print. So with that being said, I think this is a really good enclosure, especially if you turn it on and it vents those VOCs out of the room that you're in. Works really well, holds in the heat, and I would definitely have to give this a thumbs up. So with that being said, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, you can purchase them on Amazon. If you click the affiliate link down below, I'll get a little bit of a kickback, but nothing will come out of your pocket, and it's a win-win situation. And while you're at it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that as well. So with that being said, what do you like about the UPI enclosure and the ventilation system? And what tweaks or upgrades would you do to this system to make it better? Uh, I'd like to hear that in the comment section down below. So anyway, we ended up, we kit bashed our little model here and it turned out pretty well. It's passable. Painting is going to be a little bit of a pain with all of that deal, but I'm glad that I got the enclosure for my resin 3D printing. So with that being said, we're going to end this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Uh, some of the great things about this ink outside, and you should be go. Should be go? Should be go. You should be go. Seriously. Some of the great things about it is that it's, is that it's fit, fizzer <coughs> UPI 3D plin, plinter. 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 Per printer, per printer, 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 printer. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to stay up to date with what's going on with us. The buried life is where we retired in Korea. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.